got 200 miles of tunnels right underneath our feet. They're holding the remains of six million corpses. Stop. This is the empire of the dead. These are human bones. We go through here. Let's do it. So let's talk for a bit about As Above, So Below, a found footage horror movie that was released recently. Uh, someone in the comments on one of my videos asked for my thoughts on this movie, and at the time I hadn't seen it yet, but I figured it would be a good movie to check out since I have a long-standing love-hate relationship with found footage movies. Uh, the one I saw most recently was Into the Storm, which eh, wasn't all that great, really. Uh, this one, on the other hand, As Above, So Below, I really like this one. When it was called The Descent. Yeah, this is pretty much the same basic idea. A bunch of young people go exploring in some underground place, and there's a cave-in, and they're way out is blocked, so they have to keep going deeper into the caves to try to find another way out. Bunch of weird shit starts happening, and they all start dropping dead one by one. The Descent. Same basic idea, although unlike The Descent, for one thing, this is found footage instead of just a regular movie, and it's really, really weird. And sometimes this weirdness can be kind of scary, which is what you would want in a horror movie. Sometimes it just gets hilariously stupid. <laughs> it really does. Um, now, when I saw the trailer for this movie, the basic idea I got was that this was a movie about some people exploring the Paris catacombs, and somewhere along the way they took a wrong turn somewhere, and they ended up in hell. It happens. And... If they had stuck to just that simple idea, I think this would have been a lot better, but they really let their creativity just get way out of control. And it makes this movie into kind of a mess. And it's not all bad. It does have some very good points. Uh, the setting of the Paris Catacombs is a pretty good setting for a horror movie, really, and they do a pretty good job, for the most part, of creating a creepy and claustrophobic atmosphere. And in some ways, the, uh, the found footage aspect kind of adds to that. Um, sometimes it's a bit of a hindrance, because most of the time in this movie, our so-called heroes seem to have a nasty habit of using their cameras to document all of their illegal activities. Now, granted, this idea is not exactly unheard of. Um, in fact, if you're a fan of Radio Dead Air and the show What the Fuck is Wrong With You, like I am, you know that a lot of criminals end up getting caught because they capture their criminal activities on video and post it to Facebook. It does happen, but... Their criminal activities in this movie are not so simple. This mostly involves either breaking and entering or vandalizing some old archaeological sites or ancient monuments, stuff like that. Stuff that the average criminal doesn't normally do. And they're not doing it just to be rebellious or anything. They have a reason for doing all of this. It's a very silly reason. Because here's the thing. Our female lead in this movie, Scarlet, who is played by Perdita Weeks, she is uh, a student of many things. She has several degrees, two of which are PhDs. Speaks, I think, six different languages, two of which are dead languages. Smart girl, so it would seem. But one of her studies is the history of alchemy, which her father also studied before her until at some point he apparently went crazy and committed suicide, like you do. And so she kind of picked up where he left off, and apparently her father was convinced that alchemy was in fact 
real. Stay with me now, stay with me. It gets better. And he apparently had dedicated a good chunk of his life to searching for Nicholas Flamel's Philosopher's Stone. Which you may have heard of if you know anything about alchemical legends or if you saw the first Harry Potter movie. Uh, the Sorcerer's Stone, for you Americans out there. And, yeah, the, the Philosopher's Stone is basically this alchemical tool that can turn iron into gold or heal wounds or give the owner eternal life or some such bullshit. It's, it, it, what exactly this thing does varies depending on what story you read and also seems to vary depending on the situation in the movie, really. But, yeah, that, that's the goal. They're searching for the Philosopher's Stone, and it's apparently buried somewhere in the Paris catacombs. This is a very silly idea. And as I mentioned, they have a tendency to document all of their illegal activities, and this starts out right at the beginning of the movie when Scarlet, before she even gets to Paris, first she goes to Iran. Illegally, she actually sneaks into the country. Already we're off to a bad start. <laughs> and, of course, she's documenting all of this on video and acknowledging on the fucking camera that if she gets caught trespassing, the penalty is apparently getting buried up to her neck in sand. Which sounds like utter bullshit to me. Uh, I admit that I am not exactly up to date on my Iranian criminal punishments, but, uh, you know, Iran does a lot of crazy things, but that seems a bit beyond them. E even for them, that just, that sounds nuts. I, I'm pretty sure that's not true. But anyway, I'm sure they would throw her into prison for trespassing. Uh... <laughs> but they'd probably be more likely to hold on to her for a while and try to ransom her back to the State Department of whatever country she was from. I think it was England, but... Anyway, she goes there, meets up with some friends of hers in that country, who also point out to her that if she gets caught, she could go to jail. They say all of this while they're on camera, and yeah, buddy, you're helping her right now. Guess what? You could go to jail too and I think the police might be interested in that video footage she has. And yet, you don't seem too concerned with asking her to turn off the camera. A lot of you people in this movie are stupid. So, anyway, she's in Iran because there's this ancient system of tunnels below whatever city she's visiting. I didn't catch the name. And apparently, this ancient tunnel system is being used by criminals for smuggling, and the Iranian government's answer to this is to just blow them all up. No tunnels? No problem! Again, Iran does a lot of crazy things, but this seems beyond even them. But anyway, she is convinced there is some artifact hidden down there that will lead her to the Philosopher's Stone, or at least point her in the right direction. And sure enough, she finds it down there and manages to get out just as the place is being blown up and somehow survives the shockwave with her body and her camera completely intact. Because apparently she's freaking Wonder Woman. And then she goes to France and assembles a team to go down into the catacombs, which consists of three locals who are uh, apparently experienced with uh, exploring urban areas that are normally off-limits to the public. And a couple of people that I guess she knows from school. There's an American dude and a token black guy, because you have to have a token black guy in a horror movie to get killed off. That's, that's just how these things work. <laughs> um, so before they actually go into the catacombs, they commit even more criminal activities, catching them all on video, because... Uh, the American dude is apparently friends with this girl who works at a museum that has Nicholas Flamel's headstone on display, and Scarlet thinks this headstone has some sort of hidden directions to his tomb where the Philosopher's Stone is supposedly kept. So they get permission to go in there after hours. A rare example of them not breaking and entering, but once they're in there, they yank the headstone off the wall, 
not giving a single fuck, and then start dumping a bunch of chemicals onto it and lighting it on fire. Because of course they do. And this somehow reveals some cryptic ancient poem that's in, I think it was in Aramaic or something. It was in some foreign language, although when you translate it into English, it still rhymes. Because language totally works that way. And this somehow leads them to finding the supposed location of the tomb of Nicholas Flamel on the map. And so now they know where they're going, so they sneak into the catacombs. And, of course, at some point they crawl through a tunnel and it caves in. And now they're trapped in there, so the only thing they can do is move on and try to find a way out. And that is, well... Okay, I was about to say that's when a bunch of shit starts happening, but really... This is the thing I don't get about this movie, because it's not that the catacombs are haunted or anything, or that they actually, like, journey into hell. They kind of do, I think. I, but it, anyway, it, it's confusing. The freaky stuff actually starts happening before they even go into the catacombs, and for Scarlet, before she even gets to France, while she's in Iran, after she finds that artifact and is trying to escape from the tunnel before it all blows to hell, she briefly sees this image of some guy that's hanging by a noose, but when she looks away and then turns back again, it's gone. And it's obviously not a hallucination because it's caught on the camera, it's all found footage, so, you know, we're, this is all caught on tape, so it's real, it's happening. But yeah, it's happening before she even gets to fucking France. So what exactly is causing all of this and why? I don't know. It just... Yeah, the, the movie does not make a whole lot of sense. And I mean, sometimes in a horror movie, you can kind of get away with that because, you know, the unknown and the fear of the unknown... That kind of thing can work well in a horror movie. But it still has to somehow make sense within the context of the film. And really, there's not a whole lot in this movie that makes sense. Uh, it seems like the people who made this film just made up a list ahead of time of as much weird shit as they could think of and then just tried to cram it all into one movie one way or another, because a whole lot of stuff in this seems to be just being weird for the sake of being weird. Like, when, when they first meet up with our French urban explorers, the people who are taking them into the catacombs, they meet up with them in a nightclub. While they're entering said nightclub, as they're walking in, this random goth chick walks out and just stares right into the camera as she's exiting the club. And then while they're talking with these people, you can see her in the window in the background walking by very slowly and still staring right at them. And this girl actually shows up later on in the movie and kills one of the people in the, in the group. Uh, she actually kills off the token black guy. Why and how did she get down there? And what is the point of all that? What is that? I don't know. At some point while they're exploring, they find some ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics because that's what you would expect to find in France. Don't know why this is happening. There's another point while all the freaky shit is going on where they find this grim reaper looking dude who's sitting in this old wooden chair and it's not some like ancient wooden throne or something, some, like, artifact that you might find on an episode of Game of Thrones or something like that. No, 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 it's just some old, like, early 20th century wooden chair that your grandmother might have in her house that she's had most of her life. Okay? I, I don't know. There's, when they first walk into the catacombs, they walk by this group of people, of which that crazy goth chick is one of. She shows up a lot for some reason, and they're all just standing in this room, chanting their own, like, cheap knockoff of Ave Satani. Why are they doing this? 
because the director thought it sounded creepy, and I guess he was right, but it was weird. And it, the weird thing is the the French guys just totally brush this off. You know that when, when they point out these people are you know sitting in here doing this weird satanic chant, the guy's just like, oh yeah, some weird people come down here sometimes. It happens. This is apparently an everyday occurrence. One of the more annoying aspects of this movie is the number of times that you hear a character say, we have to keep moving, or something along those lines. Because I swear to God, once they get past the point where they're caved in and the way back is blocked, from then on, as they're journeying through the catacombs and all this weird shit is happening, I swear, every five fucking minutes, something crazy happens, and then after it's all over, someone says, we have to keep moving, or we can't go back, or we gotta keep going, something to that effect. You could almost make a drinking game out of this. Real, actually, no, no, I take that back. Don't do that. You'll die of alcohol poisoning. Don't, don't, no, no, bad idea. But, but seriously, every five fucking minutes, it gets so goddamn repetitive. It just, I can understand having to say that at some point, like when a character dies, and people do start dying, of course. I mean, this is a bunch of people trapped underground in a horror movie. Someone's gonna die. They have a token black guy in their party. You know he's toast. <laughs> uh, I know, that's racist, but blame the movie, not me. I didn't do it. It's really hard to figure out exactly why all of this is happening, because it's, it's not that they literally end up in hell, although it kind of seems like they do. There's a point somewhere about halfway through their journey where they find this uh, entrance to a cave that has the words, Abandon all hope ye who enter here, written above it. Which, this was kind of stupid. Scarlet says, According to Christian mythology, those are the words inscribed on the entrance to hell. No. That is not according to Christian mythology. That is according to Dante's Inferno, which is based on Christian mythology, but it's not canon. You would think Miss Two PhDs would know that. Apparently, one of those PhDs was not in literature. <laughs> but I don't have a PhD in anything, and I know this. I can pick this shit out. Oh, dear, oh, dear. But anyway, uh, apparently the reason all of this is happening, or it's not really a reason, it's just an explanation of sorts, but I guess what's happening is everyone in this group has an unconfessed sin that they're being haunted by. Like, in Scarlet's case, it's... I mentioned her father committed suicide at one point, and the day he offed himself, he tried to call her on the phone, but she was busy and she didn't pick up, and she's felt guilty about that ever since, and that's why as she's going through her journey, she keeps seeing his body hanging from the ceiling by a noose. There's also one point as they're traveling through the catacombs where they start hearing a phone ringing, and she picks it up and it says voice on the other end says something to the fact of why did you, did you talk to me or something like that. Um, American dude is haunted by the drowning of his little brother many years ago who he, I guess, tried to, his leg got caught while he was underwater and he tried to go for help but he got lost and by the time he came back with help it was too late. Uh, one of the characters apparently had a son out of wedlock and denied it was his to this day. And although I don't remember much in the movie about him getting haunted by that, but anyway. Uh, but then a couple of the characters, we never actually find out what their unconfessed sin supposedly was. Like, token black guy just gets taken out completely at random uh, by that weird gothic chick. I, I don't know why, I don't know what that has to do with his unconfessed sin. Uh, one of the, uh, the French explorers, 
uh, the female of that group. She gets taken out, and they don't explain what her issue is. Uh, when another French guy gets taken out, oh man. This, I get the feeling they were going for something kind of scary, but it just ended up being very silly. They come across this flaming car, which has uh, a kid in the back seat, who's apparently just getting burned alive. Uh, um, one of the French guys recognizes this kid, and he says some of the effects of, like, it wasn't my fault, it wasn't my fault! So I guess we're meant to infer, like, he was driving the car at the time and wrecked it, and he got out alive and the other guy didn't. And he all of a sudden gets sucked into the car, which collapses in on itself and then buries the French dude in the ground, but his legs are sticking out of the ground. And somehow his shoes, socks, and pants have just vanished. <laughs> it's just his legs sticking out of the ground, out of the solid rock ground. And even funnier is the rest of the surviving members of the party then run up and try to pull him out. I don't know what they expected to happen there. It's one of those moments that, like, I'm, I'm sure it sounded very creepy on paper. But oh man, it did not work in the movie. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's the movie in a nutshell. Uh, not much more to talk about, really. The, um, the idea had potential. I will say that, but you know, bunch of kids wandering underground, somehow winding up in their own personal hell. There, there was potential for a decent story here, but they just got way too carried away. Uh, can it, um, unless you're really into horror movies and you're just dying to see... So, so well, well, you know what? If you're really into horror movies and you want to see a movie like this, rent The Descent. That's what you need to do. Don't waste your time with this one. It's, it's nowhere near as good. Uh, can't really recommend this one beyond maybe catch it on cable because I'm sure it'll hit cable at some point but beyond that I can't really give this much of a recommendation it was kind of disappointing and that's about all I have to say about as above so below and it did kind of below <laughs> that was terrible I'm sorry I will never make that pun again I'm probably lying take care it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault!